Hey guys, Jill and Nathan here. Welcome back to Whispering Willow Farm. Hello. We are outside this morning and we have got an entire bed of carrots behind us, a lot of which are starting to go to seed. Um, I've got that carrot hummus recipe I promised everybody. Um, but we're actually harvesting these before they do go to seed. Good thing about carrots is that you can kind of um, like tip and tail them <laughs> so you can cut the top off cut the tail off you can put them in these like um plastic bread bags like just you can buy them in bulk it's what we used to sell our microgreens in and they make a really really great storage crop so i know right now a lot of us are in the hustle and bustle of our summer gardens we've got okra coming on we've got our beets we've got our carrots we've got tomatoes in a large way our peppers Green beans very soon. Green beans very soon, and that's great, right? It's so exciting. But with that, you have the heaviness and the weight of, oh my gosh, I have to preserve all this, right? I got green beans that need to be canned. I've got tomatoes that need to be processed. One thing that I love about growing uh, root crops in the spring and the summer is that they're great storage crops. I can literally harvest these, tip them and tell them like I'm talking about, throw them in a bag, throw them in our spare refrigerator, and they will be good for months and months. And I can pull them out for fresh eating. We can pull them out to make ferments. We can pull them out to make hummus, whatever we want. It's one of those things that it's very off, like hands off. And so if you are wanting to grow an abundant of food on your farm or in your garden, but you're slightly overwhelmed with this idea of having to preserve it all, I highly, highly recommend you looking into these storage crops. And there's gonna be so many different things. It's not just root vegetables. We're about to start our round of uh, winter squashes. Those are really, really great. Potatoes are a good storage crop. You don't really have to worry about it. So that's just your regular potato, your sweet potato. You've got your butternut squashes, your spaghetti squashes, acorn squashes, things like that like that your pumpkins and those are all things that you can plant and then kind of just keep your hands off of um, until you have to harvest them and then really can kind of keep your hands off of them after that put them in some sort of root cellar if we're talking about the squashes a lot of those do well at just like a room temperature like 70 degrees fahrenheit um, but the root crops over here are probably some of our favorite most used vegetables yep. really just year round so let's get busy harvesting so I am pulling all of our carrots and a lot of them are going to vary in sizes. So we have these right here that are going to be really good as far as just like what we're fermenting, uh, what we're putting in the storage. But then we've got these smaller ones, right? And you're thinking, oh, what do I do with those? I'm actually just going to be roasting these whole. Um, and so don't throw those away. Even the baby ones, put some olive oil, some seasoning, pop them in the oven and they just taste really, really good roasted. So really you can utilize the carrot at any stage. All right, guys, we had a visitor stop by the farm, so I'm sorry, but we are going to head inside and get started on this carrot hummus recipe that I am super pumped to share with you guys. All righty, so I already started on this process, but what I did is I cut the tops off, I peeled these, I washed them. I have my good old scrap buckets that'll go to the pigs. Now you could take, like I said, and make pesto out of this. I am gonna save some of these. Some of them have were going to seed, um, so it wasn't exactly like ideal for making pesto. Um, so I have got the carrots roasting at 350 degrees in the oven right now. So they're just gonna roast until they're soft. I'm not doing anything special to that. And then I have got water boiling for chickpeas. Um, so once the water boils, I'll throw the chickpeas in, wait until they get soft. We buy most of our lentils and chickpeas from Azure Standard, uh, just because you can buy in bulk and it's just super nice. So while I'm waiting on some of this to kind of cook and soften up, um, I just want to take this opportunity to really kind of encourage you guys, if you're growing food and you are just sick of eating food the same way, <laughs> um, just experiment with that. There's so many things you can do. Um, I just within having conversations with people we'll talk to them about uh, the beet hummus that we make and the carrot hummus that we make and they're like what you do what with this i would never grow beets my family doesn't like it but if you maybe if you try foods in different ways uh, you will realize that maybe you have acquired a taste for it once it's mixed in with a bunch of other things or maybe just a new way of trying it i know for my family they didn't really love beets but roasted beets when you add some good seasoning in there they really like and then the beet hummus is just a total uh, game changer. I mean, you've got chickpeas in it, you have tahini sauce, you have all these different flavors. And when they all marry together really well, they taste pretty brilliant. And I also totally recommend eating with the seasons. This is so important, you guys. Uh, 
I mean, literally, I grow probably 90% of our plant needs. Um, and so that's nice. When we're going to the grocery store, we are certainly not going to the grocery store uh, for carrots and beets and tomatoes and cucumbers. We're going for like toilet paper and stuff like that. Um, but it is really important to learn to eat with the seasons. And then you realize that each season has its appropriate time to be eaten and to be enjoyed. And it's kind of like this, you know, like butternut squash. I've just been like craving and craving butternut squash. But for us, that's kind of a fall staple. And next week, we're actually going to be starting all of our fall squashes, winter squashes, things like that. And I know that that's something I can long and miss, you know, all summer long. But it's going to be a staple in our house come the winter time. I know for many of you guys, tomatoes is that way. You don't have tomatoes through the winter and you just crave that juicy, acidic bite with some salt sprinkled on top. Uh, that's not quite my jam. Um, but I know that, you know, we just, our bodies end up craving these things. And it really just makes it that much more enjoyable and delicious in my opinion whenever you've had to go weeks or even months without that thing and so carrots are one of the things that we can be growing year-round we have the luxury of eating that early spring we're enjoying it here in the summer and then we'll have them all fall and winter too so when you do have those crops that you are getting to eat year-round because that's how your crop rotation um, you know played out find new ways <laughs> uh, to preserve them find new ways to prepare them for your family to eat so we ferment a ton of carrots in the winter. We actually just got done with that big, it was like a massive gallon jug of carrots. So now that that's done, we're probably gonna take this wave and make another round. But then obviously we'll keep some, like we'd mentioned, in our cold storage, uh, just to be able to eat fresh with hummus, like what we're doing, or maybe even making hummus, which is what we're doing today too. Um, so lots of different things, super versatile, really just like look for those seasonal cookbooks, for those, um, you know, cookbooks on just like how to prepare vegetables from your farm, learning how to eat seasonally. It's something that I promise uh, you will not regret doing because food does taste so much better when it is grown and eaten within its appropriate season. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> um, I should add that I've played around with this recipe, but I haven't exactly got it tweaked. So as I was putting together the ingredients so it's the chickpeas you've got your carrots you're gonna have olive oil a clove or a clove of garlic um some like salt pepper uh, i added some cumin and then some lemon juice but tahini is like tahini is what uh hummus is and i have had tahini but i seem to have misplaced it so i tried to make this recipe without it and the consistency is just super off. So I put it in the blender, just didn't really blend up really well. I did make Nathan be my taste tester. Babe, what'd you think? It's amazing flavor. He said the flavor's good, the consistency's off. So this one, I think I could probably go buy tahini, throw it all back in like the food processor or the blender and it would be fine. So we're gonna try that again. Um, but this is a really fun thing. One, when you get to grow your own food, you get to experiment. I have an entire bed. So I only used, um, gosh, like two or, th two or three cups of carrots, chopped them up, roasted them. So it wasn't like we lost a lot and then this isn't gonna be wasted either. We're gonna just um, try to keep tweaking it. However, I do not feel confident to say, hey, I've nailed this recipe, uh, even though that was originally what this video was gonna be, telling you, teaching you how to make <laughs> carrot hummus, but I haven't quite mastered that. So stay tuned, maybe I can tweak it over the weekend. Uh, why don't you get up here? Nathan's been mowing, mowing. and sweating. <laughs> Yeah, you want me? <laughs> I love you, but. You told me I'll to come you, jump I'll in the video. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so just the consistency was off. Yeah, so. We're missing tahini. Which is really like, tahini is sesame based and it's just super creamy. It's sesame based, but it's also, isn't it also chickpeas? It's like tahini. It's all sorts of stuff. Chickpea, sesame seed, something else. But yeah. I think that and some more good squizitos olive oil. That was the thing too, is I didn't have my good oil. I was using the butter oil instead of the Tuscan garlic, which you could taste the butter in it. So, yeah, you sure can. gosh, man. So we need to go so see close. Squizitos. We need to go see Squizitos. And pick up some tahini. And it's going to be perfect. We're going to save this. We're going to tweak it. We're going to fix it. And it's going to be great. But you guys are still going to see this video because this is homesteading right here. Yeah. I, gosh, if I didn't just like 
Well, one, if I didn't share my mistakes with you guys and you couldn't learn from my mistakes and then we couldn't all do better. So if you have failed at something, which I don't really consider this a failure. It's not, it tastes fantastic. It's we're tweaking one, that would be fantastic on a bagel as a spread or like um, if you ate hamburgers as a spread, like that would even be really good as a spread for a pizza base, which I make a veggie pizza that's got the carrot hummus. Um, so I'm trying to mimic a uh, carrot sriracha hummus that we buy. And I have no real recipe I'm going off of. I'm just like, um, I'm making all these different hummuses and none of them are quite right. And so I'm trying to figure out <laughs> how do I tweak it enough to make it great. But you have to try, not only in the kitchen, uh, which is something I have to tell myself often since you're the one in the kitchen all the time, but you have to try when it comes to growing food. You have to try it and it may be kind of what it's supposed to look like or maybe that's what it was supposed to taste like, but you're slightly off. Grow it anyways. You're gonna learn from that and do better. So I always welcome um, mistakes or failures, if you will, because I think it just makes this better. You grow from them. You grow from them, and then you, we still have good food. That's right, good food. And we're gonna fix this. We are gonna fix this, so stay tuned. Maybe we'll shoot a vlog over the weekend, and it will be the fixed version of yeah, we'll the carrot hummus recipe. Sitting there munching on it. <laughs> Until then, thanks for hanging out with us. As We, um, we kind of had this vlog all blotchy because we started to harvest and then we had a guest. So I never actually really got any good harvesting videos. I think I have some on my phone. I might try to plop those in the video throughout or something. But thanks for hanging out with you. Thanks for hanging out with us, you guys. We hope you have a lovely weekend. Absolutely. Happy fourth. We'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.